Arch a daughter, and this daughter picked up Moses and then adopted Moses as her son. And so the result will be that Moses will have been king a Pharaoh in Egypt, being the son of Pharaoh's daughter, since a lady, a woman, could not be a Pharaoh. And then when Moses knew that, he said, No, I'm going to take up my cross, I'm going to deny myself of that kind of political office in Egypt because I know God has a demand upon my life. Can you give up anything like that? Position, royalty, for example, royalty that will lead you into idolatry in your village, in your community, your local government, your tribe. They want to make you a chief. And you know that if you become a chief there, although the royalty will be there, the position will be there, you are going to get into idolatry. You know you'll not be able to escape it. And then you say, I'm sorry, I cannot take that. That will be like Moses. He said, I cannot take that because it will compromise my conviction in the Lord. It may be in your place of work. They're saying that they're going to promote you. But if they're going to promote you, you must join their society. And then they make that such it look something like modern and social, but internally there, you know, there's initiation. They're going to initiate you. But they say, if we initiate you, you are going to have this position. And then you are concerned, what do I do now? If I take this position, more money and more prestige, royalty, they look at me up there, but you are going to make, you are going to sell your soul into the hands of the devil. You reject it. It may be in another place that, you know, the people, they say you are going to be part of this and part of that. It will give you a great name, a great prestige. And then you say, I reject that because this is my cross. Look at that again in verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was, when he was come to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Look at this in verse 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. There are some things that are pleasant to the flesh, but they are deadly to the soul. There are some things that appear like they are pleasures to your flesh it, for a temporary time, but it will get you into hell fire. That's the reason why you say, no, I'd rather get rid of that. I reject that. And then I'll be lowly. I'll be humble. I'll not allow anything like that to lead me to hell fire. We're told in verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ, the cross of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who was, who is invisible. That's what the Lord is telling us that if we're going to win the crown at all, then we must bear the cross. Think about that in your life. What are you denying yourself of? What cross are you bearing? So that you can wear the crown on the final day. Point number two now, the consecration of the conqueror. The consecration of the conqueror. If we're going to conquer, we cannot take all these baggages uh, be, uh, you know, behind us and just carry this and carry that. There are things we have to leave aside, set aside, and say, that cannot be part of my life. If you're really me, you want to serve the Lord, you want to worship the Lord, and you want to win the crown on the final day, there is the consecration of the conqueror. Let's see what the apostles said. We're looking at Mark chapter 10, verse 28. Mark chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 28, Mark 10, verse 28. Here is what it says. 
Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and I follow thee. That's the consecration. There is something to leave behind, my brother, my sister. We have left all and we have followed thee. And I'm going to ask you again, what have you left behind? I'm a Christian now. I'm born again now. I'm called to salvation. I'm called to separation. I'm called to sacrifice. I'm called to sanctification and to service. What have you left behind? Look at your life. What is it that, you know, you are not enjoying, that other people are enjoying? Are you not the same with the people of the world? Whatever our cause to you, pick it up. Not deny yourself of anything. The apostle said, we have left all and we have followed thee. And then the Lord gave them, look at the answer in verse 29. And Jesus answered and said, verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left home, house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, and the gospel. Do you see a list of things there? The closest relationship to us, father, and mother, son, and daughter, husband, or wife, that if they contradict the word, if they will not go along with you and encourage you in the conviction that you have, you say, oh Lord, for the sake of heaven, I'm willing to give up anything and everything. That's the cross we're talking about. And that is the consecration that you love Jesus Christ above your mother, above your father, above your daughter, above your son, above your brothers, above your sisters, above your wife. Above your husband, you know, all this kind of CC Christianity, effeminate Christianity, my dear, my dear, my darling, and then we're compromising the word of God. We cannot take a stand and say, hey, listen to me, woman, if we're going to be together, here is the promise I made to the Lord. I'm going to serve the Lord with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind. And there is no compromise in that. I knew the Lord before I knew you. And therefore you take your stand. And Jesus said that those who have left home and lands and property, and they left husband and wife, or they left their children, or they left their father and their mother, they are the people that are going to get the reward of the kingdom. But you know this kind of compromising attitude that people have today, that they bench the word of God to please a man or to please a woman. We don't find that in the New Testament. And I pray that God will bring us back to New Testament conviction in Jesus' name. Give me a good amen if you believe that. Look at Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Here are the words of Jesus Christ. He is our Savior. He is our Lord. He is our forerunner. He is the captain of our salvation. And here is what he says. We must love him above any relationship here on earth. If we don't do that, we are not qualified. We are not free to be his disciple. I'm looking at Luke chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 25. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father, you see that? And mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. What the Lord Jesus is saying is this if you are not committed, if you are not consecrated, if you don't make Jesus number one in your life and everybody else comes as number two or number three or number ten or number twenty, if you make anybody number one in your life and then you make Jesus number two, he says, I'm not going to accept that, that anyone that is going to follow after me, your, your mother will come as number two. Your father will come as number two. Your wife, your husband will come as number two. And Jesus Christ will be the King of kings and the Lord of lords in your life. You know, sometimes we carry this family relationship too far. My husband, my husband, my husband. And then your husband is demanding something that is not according to the word of God. Make you to disrespect, to dishonor, and to disobey the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you're still flowing on. I don't want to rock the boat. I want to keep my home. I want to make sure that my 
my husband does not look at another woman because of that, I will do whatever he says. No. If you are going to be a Christian, a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ himself said, If any man come to me, and hate not father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, say so very live also. It will cost you something. It says, if that is not so, you will not be his disciple. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. I pray that you will not give up your faith. I said you will not give up your faith. And you know, some of us, before you got married, you are fervent for the Lord and zealous for the Lord. You are obedient to the word of God. You are humble. You are controllable. And your life was transformed. After the marriage now, we can't understand you. We can't know. We don't know where you are going. We don't know what to ask you is again. Walker's meeting. Uh, well, my, my darling said, I cannot give all that time to Jesus. It is too much church, church, church every time. And then there is the retreat, and you have been coming to retreat for how many years now? 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Where were you sleeping when you were coming? And now you are married, and your dear wife said, Is that where we're going to stay at that retreat? I cannot go there. If you love me, and you are my darling, if you are my honey, then you cannot attend the retreat now. Let us go and spend this festive period at home. You say, Well, my darling, I cannot say no to you, but I can say no to Jesus, shame on you. I said, shame on you. Give me a good amen. A person that is following, doing to follow Jesus will say, hey, come on. I've been attending that retreat for 15 years, for 20 years, and that is what has made my life what I am. And you come into my life, you tell me not to go to that retreat, please. If you want to go, you can go home, but I am going to be at that retreat, and thank God that is why you are here. I say, thank God, that is why you are here. And forever, forever, until Jesus comes, you will take your stand for the Lord in Jesus' name. And you know, sometimes it's not even husband and wife. It is between the leader and the workers in the church. And I want you, I love you workers. I appreciate you workers. And I respect you and I honor you. And I really appreciate the great work you are doing for the Lord in the kingdom. But sometimes a worker becomes so full of himself that the worker is saying, well, pastor, you know what? This is not 1977. This is not 1992. This is a new century. And if we're going to be workers in the church and be our best, you must drop this doctrine, drop that doctrine, drop that doctrine. We drop the doctrine for you so we can keep church going on and miss heaven. You think I'm going to miss heaven because of you? Never. That's what the Lord said, that we even hate our very life. If we have to suffer, we suffer for righteousness' sake, so that we will keep the ticket the Lord has given us for heaven. And if you are going to get to heaven, the doctrine you met in the church, we're still going to stand on that doctrine until Jesus comes in Jesus' name. I'm, I'm sure you don't want your pastor to compromise just because of you, to please you and displease the Lord and to bend to you and the son of the Lord. I'm sure you don't want something like that. You don't want your pastor, you don't want your leader to exalt you, whoever you are, above the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to say, let Jesus be the king of your life. Let him be the Lord of your life and the master of your life. And then we keep the standard where Christ has given it unto us. And we're going to abide in that truth until the very end in Jesus' name. And that's what the word of God is saying, that we die to self. We die to self. We do not allow all the sakes of the world to shift off from our base and from our conviction so that by the grace of God until he comes, we're standing on the world, on the unchanging watch of God. I'm looking at John chapter 6. John chapter 6. We're looking at verse 16. John chapter 6 verse 16. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear this? This is an hard saying. Who can hear this? You know, when they heard the word of God, bear your cross, take up your cross, deny yourself, follow after me. 
all the things of the world, throw them away and live with conviction the way he wants you to live. When they heard, they, they just said, it's too much. We cannot abide by that. Look at verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. From that time, when they had the real standard and demand of the kingdom, many of his disciples said, we cannot take that, and they went back. What did Jesus do? Did he say, oh, I'm sorry? Why did you misunderstand me? I didn't mean that. And then, water everything down, modify everything. Oh, it's not so serious. It's not as demanding as that. Come back. No, not Jesus. I pray you will be like Jesus. I said I pray you will be like Jesus. How I pray that every preacher in this, our little church, will be like Jesus in Jesus' name. How I pray that every overseer in this, our church, will be like the Lord Jesus Christ, will lift up the standard. And whoever agrees, whoever does not agree, you're not looking for people to love you and appreciate you at the expense of people getting to heaven. Whoever agrees, whoever does not agree, you are standing upon the word of God because here is the consecration of the conqueror. Look at the next verse in verse 67. Here is what Jesus said. Jesus said unto the twelve, will you also go away? Will you also go away? Others are going away. Others say the standard is too high. Others say this demand of holiness is too much for them. They cannot abide and they're going. Will you also go away? Look at verse 68. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the word of eternal life. And we believe and assure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's similar to what Ruth said. Look at Ruth chapter 1. Ruth chapter 1, the demand, the, the challenge will come to you like it came to Ruth, like it came to all these disciples, that even your pastor might say, well, that's the standard, that's the word of God, will you stay or will you go? You know, these pastors that are begging people to serve the Lord, they are begging people, they okay, we'll manage, we'll tolerate that, that's what you want, okay, uh, go ahead with that. You don't want to bend to the word of, all right, don't, don't, don't disturb the, don't disturb the boat, just go ahead with the work you're doing. There's nothing like that in the Bible. In the Bible, they laid up the standard and they raised up the standard and then they will even ask them, do you want to follow? Do you want to go? Do you want to stay? Or do you want to run away? And the people that really want to get to heaven, they are the people that said, this is the world. Where can we find something like this? We're going to abide by that world. And those are the people, the conquerors, that will win the crown on the final day. And I pray that you, too, you will win the crown in Jesus' name. Look at Ruth chapter 1. I'm reading there from verse 15. Ruth chapter 1. We're reading from verse 15. And she said, it's not me not talking to Ruth. Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. Hey, that is not motivational. That's not encouraging.